you so much for having me. I'm excited about this. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. This is going to be one of the least exciting, most important videos that you will watch throughout this entire course. And the reason for it is it's not about how much money you make. It's all about how much you're able to keep in your corner, keep in your pocket. And if we can teach and show you how to do that, I joke all the time that no one cares about your money more than you do. And I mean it. The reason that I mean it is because if you have an understanding throughout the course of the year on how to reinvest your money, how to put money back into your business, throw the money off a bridge. I don't care what you do with it, but I want you to be able to make that decision so that you can grow and scale and achieve your goals quicker than you would be able to otherwise. My name is Tommy Thornburg. I'm the president here at Prime Corporate Services. And our entire goal is to make sure that you have a blueprint, you have a roadmap on how to plan, profit, and protect your business. We've been in business for over 10 years. We've helped structure over 150,000 entrepreneurs. So you're in good hands. One of the things that you'll notice throughout this presentation, if you go to YouTube University, it's going to make your head spin with all the additional content and different ideologies that will be thrown at you. But I'm going to give you the pros. I'm going to give you the cons. And hopefully by the end of this video, you can decide how to set your business up to be efficient with your long-term vision. So jumping in here, today's key points. Number one, let's talk about entities. All of you are professionals. Are you a sole proprietor? Are you an LLC? Are you an S corporation? Are you in a state where you need a professional limited liability company? Let's talk through what that looks like, go over the pros and cons, and make sure that you're not leaving money on the table. Number two, what is a tax deduction? How in the world does it work? And what deductions do you qualify for being a real estate professional? I'm going to share a story with you real quick. My, uh, my wife actually got her real estate license about two years ago, and she's fallen in love with it. But we did it solely for the tax benefits to be a real estate professional. Anyone watching this already has that going for them in most cases. So let's talk about what to be aware of, the best strategies on how to track your expenses, and put you in that position for success. Number three, asset protection and generational wealth. It is not about where you are right now. It's where you're going to be in one year, three year, five year, 10 year. Some of you are already doing several deals. Some of you haven't done your first deal yet. The sooner that you can give yourself a solid foundation on building and growing and scaling your business, the easier it is to achieve long-term wealth. Number four, personal credit versus business credit. A hot topic, something we've been doing from the beginning of Prime Corporate. We're currently getting over $4 million a month in business credit and corporate funding for our clients. I've never met an entrepreneur that says, I wish I have less money. Because the more money that you're making, the more money that you can generate or the more people that you can help. And I think having additional funding options is a benefit to any entrepreneur at any stage of the game. All right, before we jump into it, everyone's favorite part. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> legal disclaimer, here we go. Couple things on the legal disclaimer. First of all, everyone's situation is different. Some of you are married. Some of you have kids. Some of you already have multiple properties. Some of you have multiple businesses. That is going to change your outcome from a tax standpoint. Second thing on the legal disclaimer, I personally am not a CPA or an attorney. However, I have a full team of accountants, bookkeepers. They do all the tax work. I have a full team of attorneys that oversee the entity structuring and help with all of the estate planning. Today, you are going to get the raw from an investor and an entrepreneur. I've been self-employed since I was 18 years old. My favorite part of my career is taking complicated entrepreneurial questions, 
asking our head CPA and asking our head attorney because they are oftentimes two completely different answers. And that's okay. Attorneys should be protecting your assets. Accountants, however, oftentimes go towards the path of least resistance on filing your taxes. Somewhere in the middle is most likely what is best for you and your situation. So take notes, make sure that you're asking questions. You will have an opportunity to speak with our team for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation thanks to the buy it, rent it, profit education. But let's make sure that you're in the weeds on your specific situation. All right, enough of that. Business structure. There is no tax code that says you have to be good at business. But there is a tax code that says if you show the intent to generate income, you can take business-related deductions. Think about that with me for a second. All of you are watching this with the intent of generating income. That tells me you should be structured as a legitimate professional. Oftentimes when people are first getting started, they'll operate under their name or their social security number. The problem with that is those are considered informal businesses, sole proprietorships or general partnerships. The reason I don't recommend that to anybody is because there's no asset protection and there's very limited tax benefits. Legitimize yourself, show the intent. If you treat this like a hobby, it's gonna cost you money like a hobby. But when you treat this like a business, you now reap the rewards of what businesses have to offer. So initially to get started, it'll often be an LLC or a PLLC, limited liability company or professional limited liability company, depending on the state that you're doing business in. Once you are generating income, there's oftentimes benefit to changing the LLC so that it is taxed as an S corporation. The reason an S corp election is so valuable is it allows you to pay yourself a salary or a distribution. It also allows you to avoid half of your self-employment tax which is Medicare, Social Security, saves you about 7% of that overall business income. Remember, when I say it's not what you make, it's what you keep, I'm confident you'll find a better place for 7% of your income than Uncle Sam's pocket. So with that being said, entities can be very complicated. I've asked hundreds of attorneys. I've watched the hundreds of hours on YouTube. I have broken it down into what I feel are the three most important areas whenever you set up a business entity. Number one, privacy and protection. How much privacy do you want? I personally don't want my address listed. How much protection do you need? You're gonna care a lot more about your generational wealth when you have 10 properties than when you have one. So that's gonna change for you, but take it into consideration. Number one, privacy and protection. Number two, tax benefits, profit or loss. Okay, good or bad, profit or loss, how do you put yourself in a better position? All of you have invested money into education, training, advisory, marketing, branding yourself. Those are things that we wanna make sure you're maximizing tax-wise as a business owner. Number three is credibility. If I come on here and it's Tommy Thornburg, cool, but when I get to say Tommy Thornburg, president of Prime Corporate Services, that likely builds a little bit more credibility. I'm still the same Tommy Thornburg. I want you to have the credibility for your clientele. I also want you to have the credibility for banks and for lenders to be able to achieve additional financial capital, business credit, which I'll talk about here shortly. Bottom line, legitimize yourself as a business owner. Set things up the right way. Give yourself a foundation that you can really grow and scale from long-term. Once you have the business entity in place, now the fun begins. The tax code is over 70,000 pages. 
It's a joke. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. It's, it is ridiculous, though. The, the good news is there's a lot of rules. The bad news is there's a lot of rules. So the first thing that we have to make sure of is we need to know, are you a real estate professional or not? If you are, great. The sky's the limit deduction-wise. Real estate is king. Depreciation is king when it comes to taxes. If you're not, that's okay. Are you doing marketing, advisory? What are you doing to tweak the expenses that you are going to pay anyways? What I love about real estate professionals, what I love about what you're doing with this business model is it really opens the doors for what I like to consider are anyways expenses or bills, <laughs> right? Phone bills, internet bills, power bills, portions of your rent or your mortgage if you have a designated home office, marketing, social media. There's so many expenses that you're going to pay anyways that if we can tie those back into the business to lower your tax liability, it will save you thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars in taxes. But we got to know your situation and we have to track these expenses. Okay. There's over 250 different deductible expenses for self-employed home-based entrepreneurs. You're going to find yourself in situations often where you're asking, how do I know if this is business related? How do I know if this is a tax deductible expense for my business? You're not the only one thinking this. Back in the 1970s, a group of very intelligent accountants and CPAs got together. They went to the IRS and they said, this is insane. How do we know what is or is not deductible for our clients? So the IRS puts their most brilliant minds together. They come back with two words, ordinary or necessary. So think about that. Is it ordinary or necessary for your business? A business lunch is not necessary, but it's ordinary. People do it. Okay. So the, that group of people said ordinary or necessary. All right. That's not very helpful, but thanks, I guess. They came back with two more words, helpful or appropriate. So write that down for anyone taking notes. Is it ordinary, necessary, helpful, or appropriate for you to generate income? And when you ask yourself that question, when you think about that for a dollar spent and a tax deduction that can help your bottom line, being a real estate professional, your personal life is really intermingled with expenses you are going to make anyways, okay? As you are generating income, once you make your first sale, those of you that already have made several sales, you are going to be faced with what I like to call good problems to have. More money, more problems. It's not a joke, but they're good problems to have. There's higher level tax strategies that if you prepare for them throughout the course of the year, you can invest into things that you are going to anyways and benefit tax-wise. To give you an example, any of you that have kids under 17 and a half, what can you do to justify paying those kids, whether it's $100 a year, $1,000 a year? My girls this year are going to make $13,800. Convenient, right? I get the business tax write-off they don't have to claim the money from a tax standpoint. Now I get to teach them financial literacy. It's not just about you. It's about your friends, your family, your loved ones. The more that you know how to impact your tax situation, the easier it is to help others. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. The Augusta rule, one of my favorites, we oftentimes save clients thousands of dollars a year by operating this Augusta rule and for any of you real estate professionals, these are things you're going to do anyways. The Augusta rule is a funny one. Every year, the Masters Golf Tournament goes to Augusta, Georgia. And in the 70s, once again, a gentleman got audited for renting out his home and not filing taxes on it. Now, fortunately for all of us, he had friends in high places. He had plenty of money. This got passed all the way through Congress and is now section 280A of the tax code. 
What it says is you can rent your house out up to 14 days a year tax-free. Think about this for a second, okay? What that means for you and how I operate this is on the fifth of every month, I have an agreement that my business rents out my home for me as an individual. I'll go over my bookkeeping. I'll go over my minutes, my meetings, strategy sessions. And I get to have a reasonable rent that my business gets as a deduction and I personally don't have to claim on my taxes. Massive benefit, thousands of dollars a year in tax savings for a lot of our clients. I would love for all of you to be operating this once you're generating income as well. Okay, vehicles, are you buying? You don't have to buy the G-Wagon. I know YouTube tells you you do, but there's ways you can write off mileage or there's ways you can depreciate the vehicle. A lot of great things as you build and as you grow your wealth. All right, transitioning into asset protection. I spoke at a real estate conference last year and someone much more successful than me said one of my favorite things about what you teach at Prime Corporate is things that people don't really want to worry about on an annual basis. Think about this with me. Asset protection is one of my least favorite parts. We're going to have one of our attorneys on to do a, another training here. But if my attorney was talking about this, he'd spend 45 minutes on the next two slides. I'm probably going to spend about 45 seconds, but I am going to leave you with this. Set your business up with the thought in mind of it's not if you get sued, but when you get sued. And if you do that in the beginning, as you build wealth, as you build legacy, as you have multiple businesses, or if you are already there, you care a lot more about $500,000 in equity than you do 5,000. You care a lot more about a very profitable business than you, want, than you do that's just getting off the ground, right? but that doesn't change the fact that we do live in a very litigious society. It is a Sue happy world. If you're working with a brokerage, I know that they carry a lot of the liability, but why not protect yourself? Personal is personal, business is business. And the more that you can separate those two legally and financially, the easier it is to make business related decisions while giving yourself additional asset protection. Okay, 76 new lawsuits filed every minute. Give me a break. Sue happy world, no one's gonna deny that. I doubt I have to argue with anyone on that. But if we look over here at the top 10 lawsuits filed, breach of contract, slip and fall, premises liability, real estate, real estate, real estate. I don't tell you that to scare you, but it shouldn't come as a surprise. Real estate has created more millionaires in this nation than any other industry. The more successful you become, the larger the target on your back becomes. Now, if you're watching this and you're just getting started and you haven't done your first deal yet, set the business up with that solid foundation that allows you to grow and scale and remove this from your mindset. Fear is something that holds a lot of people back. Lawsuits can be part of that fear. Cross your T's, dot your I's, and in case you don't cross a T or dot an I, give yourself the asset protection that separates your personal home, your personal bank accounts, your retirement accounts, the things that you've worked hard to this point to gain. All right, transitioning over. That's enough asset protection, am I right? Bottom line, set yourself up to protect yourself. Personal credit versus business credit. This is something that you absolutely do not have to do, but it is something that I truly believe will absolutely benefit you at some point. Okay? Everyone has problems. However, a lot of times, the more money you make or the better your credit is, the easier those problems are to resolve. Not always, but there are those times. I think we can all agree once again. So on the personal side, picture this with me. Everyone has a legal name. Everyone has a social security number or an I-10. And then everyone also has a personal FICO credit score that ranges from 300 to 850. 
right? Difficult to build, easy to ruin. We want to do the same thing for the business. Let's make sure that you have a legitimate business name. For some of you, it may even be your name. Let's make sure you have an EIN or an employer identification number. Set up a separate business bank account to give yourself more organization. But you can also build and develop a separate credit profile for your business that allows you to use business credit, let the business pay for itself, and then pay yourself from there. Prime Corporate Services helps with entity structuring, business credit development, tax preparation, tax filing and bookkeeping, and also estate planning. Our goal is to help you crawl before you walk, walk before you run. These are things that you don't have to do all at once. But those of you that are extremely visual, I leave you with this challenge. Remember that it's about where you're going to be in one year, three year, five year, 10 year. If you don't have an estate plan, it's something that you're going to want or likely need at some point. In most states, a living trust is the easiest way to avoid probate. Trust, will, living will, power of attorney. Those of you that are gonna lean more towards the investment side, you likely are gonna be more interested in having some additional privacy, additional protection. My holding company is based out of Wyoming. It's simple, it's easy. I don't have to publicly list my name. I joke that if you send your dog across the border of Wyoming, they might come back with an LLC. It's that easy. <laughs> but it also gives you privacy. It also does give you protection. That holding company can now own your other businesses. I know some of you are active agents, brokers, management companies, investors. We've got a wide range of individuals here, a wide range of business owners. If we can piece this together as you go without having to set everything up at once, knowing the roadmap, knowing where you're going makes it a whole lot easier to get there. My wife will tell you, if it wasn't for Google Maps, I'd probably just drive in circles around my neighborhood. Do the same thing with your business. Know where you're going, know where you're heading, and it's a whole lot easier to get there. What we will do is we'll put a link somewhere around this video, primecorporateservices.com forward slash Brian Chavis, C-H-A-V-I-S. Feel free to scan the QR code. Feel free to click on the link. What we're going to do is give you a free 45-minute to hour consultation. The reason that we're going to do that is, as I mentioned, all of you should be set up properly as a business owner. Once you have your business in place, you're crazy not to want to build additional capital and business credit. And guess what? You have to file your taxes. So if we can help you with the bookkeeping, if we can keep your books in order, if we can break the year up into calendar quarters, January, February, March, quarter one, April, May, June, quarter two, so on and so forth. The fourth quarter should feel like a business shopping spree because the tax code is set up, use it or lose it. Maybe it's time for you to invest into a investment property, up your marketing, get new signs, put more money into the management, whatever that looks like. If you have the profit and loss dialed in, you will be able to invest into your future with more confidence. And that's what we want to be here to guide you with. So feel free to schedule the call. Thank you for watching this video. And uh, don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. Thanks so much. And we'll talk to you soon.